and welcome back. And as we promised, this is the time for a wine and champagne lesson. We have with us our friends from Carlage Menzies, uh, specifically from their beverage division. We have Carolyn Wade and we have Michael Fuller. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Hello. Okay, so just when everybody thought they were getting back into work mode, <laughs> we're talking about the next upcoming party, right? Absolutely. <laughs> right and early on Wednesday the morning. Yes. <laughs> and people only have three days to select their champagnes. That's true. So, I know that uh, you guys have pretty much been schooled on how to help people <laughs> pick this best possible sparkling wine and champagne for themselves, right? Oh yes, somewhat yes. Somewhat yes. <laughs> School we like to think that everything that we have is amazing, so we can't yeah, tell okay. what bad and what good, because I want it good. Uh, okay. <laughs> you sure you stop me from saying which one tastes bad? <laughs> no, they don't. The good part about it is that wines, and particularly champagne as well, tells about the person's personality. Mm -hmm. Because what I like, you might not like. Mm -hmm. mm. So it becomes a part of you because it comes from within you, you know what you prefer yeah. to drink. Yeah, mm. everybody has their personal preference. Now, where, where do we start? Yeah. I see so many bottles in front of us. I see pink, orange, black top, even a yellow top. <laughs> yellow is, green. Is that how we distinguish them? Well, um, we have, so champagnes, people normally get confused that champagnes in general means sparkling wine, but mm -hmm. champagnes are specific from France. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that, we have Proseccos, which are specific to Italy. From Italy. Mm -hmm. And Cava is from Spain. Spain. And in general, a sparkling wine could be from anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So that's why a geography lesson too. Can yeah, definitely. Can only be from France. Yes. yes. If it's from that specific region. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. So when you're being served a sparkling wine, it is essentially the same, just not from that region. Yes. There you go. So, but when somebody says, "Do you want sparkling wine or champagne?" and you say you're joking, <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to fool you. <laughs> well, like you said earlier too, um, it's a good time to take a break, you know, yeah. to unwind, yeah. figure Chill. out what you want. So we have a wide selection from all over the world today. Mm -hmm. yes. um, maybe we can start with Italy. Yeah. Let's yeah? go to Italy. So one of our new uh, wines that we got in is the Benvolio Prosecco. Mm -hmm. which is this baby over here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really, really, if you like a lot of bubbles and mm -hmm. if you like a lot of popping in Ooh. your mouth, this is the go-to. Oh. Okay. Yes, it has hints of citrus in there, some honeysuckle. Honey and fresh flowers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fresh flowers. Look at her face. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Is that, that, you like that, is that your favorite? Try. Yes, that's okay. one of my favorites. You know yes. when you get a new toy for Christmas <laughs> and you feel excited about that? It, that's kind of our new baby, like, you know? Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. a baby of the bunch. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And so this is one that people can be able to, and, and I like what you spoke about. You know, it's all about the bubbles. Oh, and yeah. That little mini explosion in your mouth that you feel with every sip, it's delicious. Yeah. Absolutely. And the, some of the key things to look for when you're choosing a champagne, if you're not into that much bubbles, you might choose the frizzante. Mm -hmm. If you like the bubbly and all the excitement getting from open the bottle, <laughs> then you'll choose the spumante. Mm -hmm. That's okay. the difference. The spumante has more bubbles and the frizzante not as much. S S Could you repeat that? Uh -huh. The spumante, spumante has more okay. bubbles and, and the frizzante doesn't. It has about the same bubbly effect, but not as much. Mm. Yes. I like bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That one I know. So we, we have that category, right? It, it makes it feel like a celebration. Absolutely. Right? In one bottle, you could find over a million bottle uh, bubbles in there. Wow. Yeah. And it just looks million. it looks fancier too. A million bubbles. Exactly. Wow. And let's say you open a bottle and you you're not finishing it today, which we don't recommend. You know, you, if you, you open a bottle, you're finishing. <laughs> but let's say, let's say you have a little bit extra in there and it's been sitting there for two days. Drop a raisin in there and you get back your bubbles again. Oh, really? absolutely. What the, what the raisin does is it the bubbles adhere to it, so it creates that bubble effect back mm. again. I thought you were just gonna say wake up the next morning and have mimosas, like, <laughs> throw in some orange juice, and you're good. That was <laughs> Drop a raisin in there. Yes. All right, so if we throw in a raisin, it, it helps to bring back the bubbles yes. that we love. Yes. Okay, so we have the first one, which is the Prosecco. Mm -hmm. uh, that's to the front. Yes. And uh, is it very sweet? What, what can people expect when they taste it? Well, because of because Proseccos are rather bubbly, um, you won't get too much sweet from, from okay. it. Um, it's in between, I'd say, as compared to maybe a Brut or, or a Demisec. Yeah. Like so if, okay. you're, if you're 
more into sweeter things, what would you go for? Sweeter, uh, the sweetest we have on the table right that would now. Be the cupcake prosecco. This one? Yeah. The cupcake prosecco is good. And also the grand rosé from the mayonnaise. Yes. I like sweet. So. Yes. Okay. And if you like pink so too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. That pink color yes. is always, always a, a top selling, especially among the females. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yes. So a rosé. Okay, a rosé. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a rosé has. Um, uh, why we call it a rosé is because it has a slight contact with the skin mm -hmm. of the grape that is used to make that specific wine. So a red wine, you'd have the skin for a very long time. A white wine, you'd have no skin contact and a rosé is in between. Yes. Mm. And so yes. it has that light color. Yes, yes. absolutely. Um, another rosé, apart from the Mionetto that we have here, is the Look Belier, Look Belier. Which is also a favorite amongst our customers. And that is also sweet. Okay. Yes, yeah, this yes. is one of the sweeter um, champagnes that we have. But not all rosés are sweet. Sweet. No, not no. all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And let's talk about our cupcake. Yes. People just like buying it because it says cupcake. <laughs> it says cupcake. It does not taste like a cupcake. I know. Let me mention that right away. <laughs> Disclaimer. You do not Disclaimer. have a frosting flavor champagne. Don't get confused here. Hold it. But it's absolutely really, really refreshing as yeah. well. This is, you know, like I mentioned before, none of our wines are really <laughs> on the bad end. Uh, but the Cupcake Prosecco is really, really good for your mimosas. Okay. Um, I've tried it with either orange juice or pineapple juice. Mm. It's fantastic mimosas. It's a mimosas compliment cupcake. Yes. yes. So what does that taste like? The cupcake, it, I'd say that is uh, not as sweet as your demi sec or your Brent Bowler, for example. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not as sweet as the look the year. Mm -hmm. But what I like about it is I've recently tried it with some chocolate mm -hmm. and it does complement the chocolates very well. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Chocolates? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need to go with that stuff. No one heard you. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> We're... Um, okay, so that's also a big seller for people, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So apart from that, we got a, an, another new um, champagne in, uh -huh. our, in our store from Charles Elner. We have three different champagnes from them, actually. Okay. We have a Carte Blanche, a Grand Rosé, and a Grand Reserve, Grand Reserve yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, the Grand Reserve also comes in a little... I'm just going to ask about that. What, what, individual bottle. Yes. You know, if you want a little sip. Individual bottle. That's when you really want to show your partying, right? It's like, are you holding a bottle of beer? No. Nope. No. <laughs> uh, no. That's not the party I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> so this is again. a Grand Reserve. This is a Brut, which mm -hmm. means... Uh, so the Brut is on the drier end of yes. champagnes. Mm -hmm. um, the Grand Reserve just means it's a bit more refined mm -hmm. um, than your, let's say, um, Carte Blanche. And the Carte Blanche? That is in, that's more of the, the standard. More like the Demisic. Yeah, okay. It's more closer to the Demisic. Okay. Yes. Okay, so that is the Charles Elner. Where is that from? Charles, Charles Elner is from France. Okay. Epernay, France. Yes. Mm. Yes. And what I like about it is so unique because it's it's a family-owned brand. Um, the owner actually started out as a professional riddler. I know most people, what is riddler? Uh, what what is riddler? riddler? What? Yeah, a professional riddler. What he does is he works in the winery and the riddler is someone who turns the bottle to make sure that everything is irritated and keeps fresh and the fermentation process is going through its full, you know, its full term. To oh. make sure that when you pop that bottle, it's up to perfection. Oh. And That's so what a regular does. He moved from working in a factory yes. or in a in a in a yes, as working for someone and yeah. working in a fa wine factory to, yeah, to start work. bringing out his own wines. In 1905, actually, he did, and that's oh when it went out for him. So mm. I could safely say he did an excellent job. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so we have the Santa Carolina here. Yes. All right, tell us about that. So the Santa Carolina line, um, this is from Chile, so this would be considered a sparkling wine. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, these two are more on the budget end, so mm -hmm. for budget conscious shoppers, these are, um, especially if you're a beginner with champagnes or sparkling Mm -hmm. wines too. This would be your go-to um, okay. only because it's easy and fun to drink. You know, yeah. it, you, you won't experience um, too much complications or trying to figure out 
what it what tastes like. What does it taste like? like. <laughs> okay. You mean we won't taste the fresh flowers? <laughs> <laughs> there might be, especially in the demi-sec, yes. So the demi-sec, once again, is the sweeter wine. Yes, there's boot. You notice that wine. we have the Espomante, which is also demi-sec, and Espomante boot. Okay. So from there, you could try. The price is very good, so you could maybe say, take a bottle of each. Let me see if I'm a boot person or I'm a demi-sec person. <laughs> there you go. What people like most in champagnes? Are they going more, more demi-sec or more brut? I realize that it all depends on what the person's drink. Because, for example, if they're a beer drinker, they would tend to go for the brut. Okay. Mm. If they drink stout, which more they are used to, a little bit more old flavor type, mm -hmm. almost kind of sweet flavor, then they would like the demi-sec. Mm -hmm. But the woman, the woman, most women I know that would come in the store, they love the demi-sec. Mm. Yes. Okay. And let's talk price points, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. Everybody feels that champagne is so totally expensive. out of, it just sounds expensive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, we don't drink champagne. We drink wine. <laughs> it's the same thing. So let's talk about just how affordable it is to get one special bottle of champagne for you and your friends or family over New Year's. Okay. Our retail prices start from about $34. Wow. Yeah, and right now, I could look in the camera where I see this. Uh -huh. We're giving a 15% off until December the 30th. So, okay. I mean, Ooh. you could definitely have fun with it with any one of these bottles except for the old man over here. Okay, <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. That's my third round price. <laughs> so, 50%? 50. 15. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I have a, I I have a 50 mad that I tried something that I wouldn't say. We have a 50% that I'll discuss with her shortly. Okay. Oh, <laughs> good. So at 30 plus dollars, it's about the cost of a bottle of wine. Yes. So you can be able to get a bottle of champagne. champagne. That's just mm. to switch things up and, you know, feel all best in New Year's. Year. Yes. So those would be what? Anything here? That would be the wines from Chile. The okay. Wine from Santa Chile. Carolina. Yes, Santa Carolina. We have the Espermante Boot and the Espermante de Mesec. Okay. So let's, let's, let's rank them in terms of price, right? So we'll start here. This is your more affordable option, mm -hmm. right? Like your entry level. You want to taste it to know what you'll invest in later, yes. right? Yes. Oh, here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we go, if we're to going the up cupcake. the ladder. The cupcake. To yes. the cupcake. Mm -hmm. Cupcake. You just want to buy that because it says cupcake. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. Even though I know it won't taste like it. <laughs> you might be surprised. You can fool people and say, <laughs> And then we go to the Mionetto. Okay. The Mionetto and then the Grand Rosé, followed behind in pricing. I can't read it, I can't read it. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's the, right that's the right first one, yeah. yeah. This one? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And that would average about? That would average about... 50 to 50 dollars. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. The Benvolio as well is one of the um, more on the lower end with, when it comes to pricing. Okay. Um, after that, when, when we jump into champagne, uh -huh. that's when the prices change. That's when the price <laughs> change, yes. Is that when we move into the Charles Elner? Yes. The Charles okay. Elner. Okay, so, okay, so an, uh, the Charles Elner personal bottle, what does that cost? The personal bottle, that runs for about anywhere from $30 to $45. Okay. Um, depending on, you know, what the discount is for the day, which we have that 50% off. <laughs> and this is not including the um, discount as yet. We're just no, giving, no. yeah. Yes, the those are just retail prices. Yes, okay. and then the Charles Elner, depending on which of the three that you're getting, can run anywhere from $80 to $120. Okay. Great. And? The, the look there. Mm -hmm. That is over a hundred dollars a bottle. Yes. Yes. All right, and then we move into your top, top, top of the line. <laughs> that I said I want to try that one today, and she said no, it's just. This <laughs> yes, the Armand, because we're rotating stuff and we're getting new shipments mm -hmm. every year. The Armand is going for a whopping discount this year. Mm -hmm. About 50% Okay, off. see? What? Yes. Yes. I said it. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's, and it, the presentation is excellent. Beautiful. It comes from a very good brand, so you won't be disappointed. You can choose from the gold, the rosé, or the blanc. And they come all dressed up for the party, oh, yes, too. Yes, all they, dressed up. They wear the velvet that's in <laughs> style, right? Then we're going to strip it down a bit. <laughs> this is the gold bottle. 
there you go. Look at that. And these bottles and cases can be resold on eBay as well. Really? Yes. So after you What finish, do people do with them? They collect them. Oh. Um, they're all handmade um, bottles. Okay. So there are collectors. Um, so you want to get you know? gold? Alright, let me do it dress well there. With your <laughs> that, it does! Perfectly! At 50% off, right? And this one is the rose. Rose. And, and then? This is the black. Looks so pretty. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Charlie, you gotta hold that one up. Look, it comes with an instruction manual. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like about it. It's so personal because within that, it gives you a history of the company. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gives you, you know, some information that is very good reading material. So which one do we open? <laughs> <laughs> We're going Wait, to... So, okay, so the Armand obviously is a high-end mm -hmm. high champagne. Um, so tell us what the price points are on average. Price starts from about, say, $450 mm -hmm. okay. and up. Okay. Per bottle. But you can get them right now, just right now. Oh, yes. For 50% yes. off. Yes. Wow. Yes, you can. All right. So you see, it's a perfect opportunity to come and enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's right a great year. year. You know, I know a lot of people, we always watch it every day and I say, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I had the opportunity of having it at the launch many, many years ago. It feels like a long time ago. Oh, yes. Uh, when the Armand was introduced to the Carlage uh, line. So, yeah, delicious. You definitely want to try it. And you can get it for 50% off. Absolutely. Okay, so we spoke about the different champagnes that you have here in Sparkling Wines. And this is only a sample. You have more, I yes, imagine. Yes, we do. We do. Yeah. What's your top seller for champagne? The top seller we recently got would be the Espomante. The Espomante because of the price range. And our new brand baby is taking off quite nicely. The Benvolio mm. is doing very well. Okay. We have some customers, depending on the occasion, they are choosing more the Luc Velier because it has that Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, you would see it in the music video. Yes. And then yeah. you would see it, yes, as well as the. So it's 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 quite it's affordable. It's the ones that yes. look like they're dressed for the mm -hmm. party yes. already, right? So those would be the three that are moving very fast right now. Okay. Any other particular ones that tend to be a favorite? Uh, the cupcake is also a favorite. Oh yes, among yeah. the cupcake. Our, I mean, I think yeah. the name does, you know. Does it justice? Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Cupcake. Just Who doesn't like cupcake? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your favorite? My favorite is actually the Luc Belair Rosé. Mm. Okay, so you like the sweeter. Um, that, it's very strange actually. I'm more of a beer drinker, so I would go for mm -hmm. bitter drinks. But the Luc Belair, just because it's very bold in flavor and it's it's fancy, you know. Um, uh, it, it's because you see it in the music video? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but it has um, three of France's most famous grapes in there, you know. So it's oh. very high end, it's classy, mm -hmm. um, the celebrity is drinking. You just you feel know. fancy drinking it, exactly, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Carolyn, you got to tell us which one is your baby. Well, mm -hmm. I love the Mionetto. Okay. Yes, the Mionetto Grand Rosé is very good uh -huh. because of the color and I love the bubbles. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's fresh flowers. She's not like some sunshine. She's not like some that, that one is absolutely my favorite. I love drinking it. I just love watching all the bubbles floating up and the color. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. I don't need to be too excited. Rosé. Oh, it's a rosé. Yes, okay. So, I'm, you know, that's also something. Let, let's talk about that. How do we come up with these particular flavors? What does, what does oak taste like or fresh flowers or fruity or citrusy, you know, somebody tasted it and it tastes like alcohol and bubbles, you know, <laughs> um, especially, I mean, for them, they're not experienced, yeah. we're not experienced, we don't know. How do you distinguish the flavors that are in them? Well, with wines in particular, in general, I should say that some wines you have to allow it to breathe. Okay. And what's strange is because I was taught by a wine rep, Miss Mala Vasquez, mm -hmm. and she teached us a lot of things about wine. Especially red wine, you have to open it up and now allow it to breathe. When you smell the wine, then eventually you start to smell different things. Okay. You might smell the oak, mm -hmm. you might smell the cinnamon, and when you look at it, you look at the tannins and different things. So it opens your palate. It's legs. That's the correct word. Yeah. <laughs> so it opens your palate and it kind of, that's why wines tend to be a little bit personal because it kind of 
when you smell it, you smell different things that you associate with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you might smell grapefruit, and for us, even though they don't, probably don't have golden plum in their area, when you open it, you might, yes. this yeah. reminds me of golden plum. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's so amazing and it's so personal. That's what makes wine special. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it could be a very expensive wine and you may love yes. it, but I don't. Mm -hmm. And it could be one of the more affordable options and it just happens to be my favorite yes. because I love what it tastes like. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And wine has a lot to do with your mood as well. Mm -hmm. So today I might, <laughs> today I might be enjoying the Look Belair Rosé, um, and tomorrow I might be fancying the cupcake. You know. Yeah, I feel like I'm in a cupcake mood. Today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the glass. All right. So champagne is served in a flute. Yes, in a flute. Yes. Why is that? So the flute allows the bubbles to rise properly, of course. Okay. Uh, but apart from that, it helps that flavor to build um, mm -hmm. in, in the glass. Um, and so a flute, traditionally, they would have used an, another glass that is more like a bowl mm -hmm. back in the day. Really? Yes. Um, too fast. Sorry? No, I was just saying because that, <laughs> the bubbles escape Yeah, the fast. bubbles oh, escape okay. too fast on that. So they redesigned the, the champagne glass to become a flute and that yeah. allows the bubbles to stay in there to... I to could build. never imagine drinking it in a bowl like that. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> Might as well use a spoon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Could and what else... What, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. You can go ahead. What else do people really have to know about uh, champagne selection, sparkling wine selection? Well, the most important thing I would say, opening up the bottle. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the pressure in there is about 90 square. Oh, oh so that's square. why when yeah. you... Okay. And it comes out about like 45 miles per hour at you. So it's so you could injure someone. You to, yes. Absolutely. You would pull it away from some, definitely don't point it to the nearest when you see people standing, point it away from yourself and other people. Oh, wow. We're talking about <laughs> taking a break in an argument. Yeah. Are you going to bottle of champagne? <laughs> Let's cool things off. Yeah, we've seen a lot of YouTube videos too where, we, where um, you would open it with a sword. Yeah, I see all kinds of oh, different, the, like, yeah. different methods. Um, and it looks so fancy. It looks yeah. fancy. I Very would say leave it to the professional. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you want to, you know, drink your champagne at the end of the Michael, day. Michael, it yeah. really sounds like you have a sword story for us here, right? I do. <laughs> 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 <That's right. laughs> Too many occasions. <laughs> it's like they did it this way on YouTube. <laughs> okay, but ideally, how are we supposed to open a bottle of champagne? So let's grab our Charles Elner over here. Ooh. We're going to open the carte blanche today okay. and have you folks sample that. Okay. So most champagnes uh, would come with a seal on top of that. Yes. Um, they're segregated, so that's fairly easy to take off. <laughs> that's that's easy not part. the hard part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You don't need a sword for that. Okay, no, we gotta pay attention because every year for our anniversary, we, we forget, right? Mm -hmm. And we get a little bit stuck. So first off, take off the foil. <laughs> yeah, take off the foil, and then uh, you just want to screw off the, the wire on it. Mm -hmm. So this part is also very, very Are easy. we ready to open the champagne? Because I think Mike is aiming to open the champagne right now. Oh, but, great. Yeah. Well, what else do we have to say? <laughs> so this is, this is, uh, very simple as well, right? Yeah. So I, I want to tell you the joke about it, right? Because we once tried to open a bottle of champagne on the show. I won't even say who, right? If you remember as a viewer, that's, I'm not saying. So instead of loosening, we were tightening the whole oh, while man. and it was oh. not open. Oh man. So that was, when, I, when you said it was simple, I said, well, <laughs> it depends. So maybe you want to do a counterclockwise <laughs> motion in the there future, you know, just to make sure it comes off. Counterclockwise. <laughs> yes. Um, the corks, too, for champagnes are very different than you would find in your standard wine. Okay. Uh, this mm -hmm. is just to hold that pressure in securely, you know, because um, a, a normal cork would sometimes um, let air come mm -hmm. in or escape. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, these corks are specific to champagne just because it seals it really okay. properly. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to aim this at any cameras or anybody nope. today. Yes. Uh, so do you want that big pop? Do you want that pop and, and flare or Oh, with the pressure, it does come out. Okay. It okay. comes out every time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to use a cloth to open this today just to make it more safe. <laughs> we appreciate that. Yes. Okay. So let so me... So tell us what you're doing though. Is so, it safe for me to stand here? Yes, absolutely yes, safe. <laughs> so what do you want to do? Again, um, not a counterclockwise turn for this one, but okay. maybe a clockwise turn. Okay. And you just want to allow pressure on top and turn while you're lifting. Woo! <laughs> there you go. And that is the sound of a party. Yes, that's when you know Woo! the party really begins. Uh-huh. 
So let's have you ladies sample Teach it. us how to pour yes. now. We got, we, this so, is 101. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> uh, so for pouring champagne, for red wine, let me jump to that first. A red wine, you want that to breathe. You want the flavors okay. to escape, right? So you so would pour that directly sh straight into the glass so that the flavors bounce around. And, get and the some glass would be there. different too. It would be more open, open. allow yes. air to circulate. With a champagne, because you want to preserve the bubbles, you want to tilt. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you almost like you're serving a draft beer mm -hmm. and you don't want that foam on, on top. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So we want to just tilt this slightly and pour very slowly. Just to avoid too much foam on top. Foam is also not a bad thing because okay. the foam will help preserve that flavor in there and not have all the bubbles escape. Okay. Um, so that's fairly fine to have some foam on, on okay. top. Yes. So that is one successful pour. One successful yes. pour. Let's do another. It's four of us, so yes. you get to try four <laughs> times. Four times. I might fail on the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> No reason to fail, no sorry. So you guys had a champagne tasting the other night. Oh yes, a Tell us more. about that. That was a huge success. We have um, we had had tastings with the Ben Bolio mm -hmm. and the Elner Charles the Charles Elner champagne. Yeah. And it went off. People had loved it and they had we had Maho chocolate there as well. Mm. So that's when I found out that it was very delicious with chocolate because we had people complimenting on both parties of the chocolate uh -huh. and the wines and the champagne. And it was good because they found out the difference. Most of them already knew what they liked, but when they had the opportunity to try something different, immediately we knew exactly which one would be the best seller among yeah. them. Yes. So that was that was a very very good. And what was the food. favorite of the bunch at the wine at the champagne? That was the Luc Belier and the Benvolio. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what we're getting Not the from. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people don't realize that, that you do have uh, wine tastings every now and again. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Yeah, we do. And people just have how do how do people know if something's we happening? Have, if you're interested, we do have our Facebook page. We do have our our website mm -hmm. that um, we announce whenever we're having a special event and if you're interested in joining and attending our wine tasting you could just sign into our constant contact and then Mike here is the one who handles that part yes. so you could sign in and then he'll send you an invitation whenever we have what's what's good about it is that we kind of tailor to different people with groups different people together yeah depending yeah. on what they're having what the event is yeah and that is good because you end up you know learning more and then you meet people that you know you could have conversations you can so that that is you can invite good. over later for wine absolutely <laughs> it's really interesting too to see targeting different types of uh, people and having them socialize together yeah. with the type of wine that we're presenting just because this set might enjoy, like Miss Caroline said, the, the rosé or the Benvolio better. And we put another crowd together and they might enjoy the Charles Owner, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting to see what types of people enjoy what types of wine. And I'm just noticing your shirts. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Trust me, you can dance. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's entirely wine. It's entirely wine. Um, we, have, true? we have a <laughs> uh, really interesting um, campaign going on right now mm -hmm. too for the beverage division uh -huh. where we're asking customers to make a simple choice and look for the label oh okay. so once you see the beverage division label on a bottle of any beverage that we're that you're seeing in yes. the store or in our store you know that it's Quality Top approved. Quality. Yes. Mm -hmm. quality approved by the team of college men's is because it has so many options you know there are so many options yeah. out there mm -hmm. you might be overwhelmed when you're in a yeah. store and like, okay, what wine Which do I one? need to get today? Yeah. Look for Just that turn scene. that bottle over, look for the label, the, be the beverage division, accomplishments label, yeah. and, you know and your choices. And I have to tell you, I mean, if you're going to pick up a bottle of wine, go to the beverage division. You know, you go in a supermarket, there's so many options. You have no idea what to get. And so I know a lot of people just go off price points and colors and labeling. Mm -hmm. But if you go and into names. the store itself, you have Ms. Mala there most of the time. You yeah. guys are there. Or Javon. And you can have so much health in your selection, whether you're going sweet, dry, mm -hmm. you know, party, uh, alcohol content, everything. <laughs> and of course, price point as well. Yes. Right? So what's the opening hours for the beverage division leading into uh, New Year's? Okay, we'll be opening from 8 in the morning until 12. Close 12, open 1 until 5. But on Saturdays, we go from 8 straight through until 3 o'clock. Okay, okay. Yes. so you so. can pick up that special bottle. Oh, Absolutely. yes, of course. With your 15% discount. 15%. Yes. <laughs> and or if it's 50. Safe. <laughs> yes. If you've always wanted to try it, this may be the time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
in time for New Year's. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. so I think that we should have a grand toast. Okay. Toast in the New Year. Let us be the first. So, teach us uh, how we how we uh, distinguish the flavors now. <laughs> you know, all my, my wine lessons are from Carlage Mendes on the show, right? <laughs> We're going to learn a lot. <laughs> it might be overwhelming to it <laughs> with all the information. But if you can notice already, if you're not even bringing it to your nose, you're noting, noticing some um, honey in there, some wheat almost in that flavor. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that's the flavors I'm getting at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but in general, you would want to bring this up to your nose, give it a quick whisk across mm -hmm. the nose, and, and have those flavors bounce. Well, it down. looks like she's ready to taste now. <laughs> I'm letting it. What flavors are you getting from, from it? <laughs> the alcohol and bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> right straight to your head, no? <laughs> no, it, it actually smells. I can't quite put my finger on what I'm smelling. Yeah, what you said. That's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I feel like when people get intimidated by it, that's when the, you know, it, we all smell different things, mm -hmm. yeah. taste different things, mm -hmm. so it's all okay, right? Yeah, and you don't need to make it too complicated, like Miss Caroline mentioned. It could be something that familiar. that you're familiar with from your childhood mm -hmm. or down the street mm -hmm. or at a bakery, you know? It doesn't need to be black currants from Madagascar. Yeah. <laughs> do you, you smell know? flowers in this? <laughs> no, not flowers What do you smell? I smell something I like... I do smell the honey. Yeah, like I get syrup, syrup, syrup of honey. Syrup. Yeah. 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 Is it strange for me to say that I smell fresh baked Creole bread? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, that because that's the wheat that's 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 that I'm getting from it. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that was what I was smelling. The <laughs> bread. That was it, sorry. <laughs> What's a little bit of like coconut in it, no? I, yeah, I had no champagne, it's just sniffing it. It's causing all of this activity today. All right, yes. and how do we hold the glass? We, we did our little etiquette lesson before. Oh, um, yes. Yes. So, you don't want to necessarily hold a cold glass of wine with your bare palms. Yeah. Reason yeah. being don't because the palms are hot, right? Mm -hmm. So, this, mm -hmm. if you're holding it like this, you're transferring heat. Well, that heat. just doesn't look comfortable. It doesn't look comfortable. Oh, yeah. it doesn't look this, right. this is more what people would do, but then it takes out the coolness. coolness. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. So um, wine glasses in general would have a stem. You just mm -hmm. want to hold that stem. Mm -hmm. um, I normally brace it with my pinky underneath. You could brace it. You could have your pinky out. You could be fancy. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> It's like a cup of tea where your yes. finger goes up in the air. Yeah. Um, but in general, you just want to hold that stem so that the heat does not transfer to the glass. All right. Yes. So it's, doing well. Thank you. So it's not just to look fancy, flowers. it's actually to keep the heat off it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay with red wine because, you know, the since the glasses are a little bit bigger, bigger than mm -hmm. the cup and it doesn't have a stem. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it comes and you add the warmth to it and then the flavors start coming out. Mm -hmm. If it's champagne, it's different. Mm. All right. What else do we need to know? Um, I, w I would like to know what flavor is mm -hmm. in your mouth you're getting from this. Okay. Well, let's Wait, not so let's, toast. Let, let's yeah. look at this though. So the bubbles are no longer there because it's been out for a while. Well, your one is yeah. mine. Mine, mine are still there. There they are. Yeah. There they are. Bubbles just are the pad. Um, you won't see a whole rush of bubbles yeah. coming out from the wine because then Except that when would you mean that four. it's not yeah. really good. <laughs> oh, really? Um, it, if if you're not seeing That's bubbles at all, mm -hmm. then your wine has gone flat. Okay. Um, but the bubbles are escaping very slowly, slowly. because it, it's it's. It's um, you want that that bubble to stay in there, you know. It, it it's not escaping too fast, so you don't get a flat one. That's the reason why whenever you open a bottle, you have to finish it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or throw in a reason. I hate mimosas. All right, so we're gonna sample. Yes. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, yes, to all of you at Carlick Menzies. Thank, Thank you. you for. Uh, teaching us every year about champagne and wine. Always a pleasure, always okay. a pleasure. And for making Wednesday morning a bit uh -huh. bubblier. Oh, <laughs> thank you. you know this might absolutely go well with your turkey or your family. Okay, yes, eh? well, let's see <laughs> if I will get into that. I do want to talk about pairing, so let's, let's. Okay. Mm. I love that yes, feeling, that's what yes. I love. You allow yourself to have a second sip just because your first sip might Try to wash away what water is in your mouth right now. Or <laughs> why? Mm. What are you tasting? <laughs> I just wish you could hear the bubbles in my mouth. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. But this is why we encourage you be festive uh, this year and get a bottle of champagne. Mm -hmm. 
I taste. I still can't like something citrusy. Yes. yes. Yeah. It, it, it comes citrus. out now. Yeah. So you taste. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's this is like my fourth. <laughs> Go ahead, you need more to taste it. <laughs> All that creativity will flow. Yeah. It, it, it is on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, I do taste some citrus. Mm -hmm. Something else, though. What am I missing? It's the curl bed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm feeling this test. I did get citrus. It's almost like a hint of, is it apple? Did I, it's mm -hmm. like a fruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's more um, a, a tart fruit. Yeah, a yeah. tart fruit, yeah. Yeah. I love the bubble. So, so what's the other one that we're missing? Crisp. Tell us. Yeah, it's crisp. It's sharp and crisp. Well, from this, uh, because this has a lot of Chardonnay in it, mm -hmm. you probably get some oak or butter in there. Mm. That creamy mm. taste on your tongue afterwards. Yeah. It's just fun to feel all the bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best part about champagne. But let's talk about pairings. Because pairing mm. it, oh, as yes, you talked about, with, uh, with chocolates, chocolates, you know, the cliche, the strawberry and, mm -hmm. your, uh, and your champagne. Mm -hmm. How do you figure out what to, what to bite on when you're having champagne? What's, what's the best? Well, for champagnes, um, you can have them on their own, of course. Uh, but champagnes really go well with creamy foods. Mm -hmm. Um, with sweets. with sweets, with um, maybe some cooked uh, pasta, mm -hmm. um, and of course chocolates. The chocolates really bring out the flavors of that of the champagne very very well. Okay, I think everybody's feeling the champagne. Look at them! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so happy right now. <laughs> this is the way to start your week, right? I'm kidding, but. All right, so we spoke no, about... No, but it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you taste your butter? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, so uh, once again, you have a full line of sparkling wines and champagnes available. And so That's everybody's great. had a basic lesson. You can go for the dry, mm -hmm. which is more the brute. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go for your demi sec, which is sweeter. sweeter yeah. It's not very, very sweet, but no, it's not sweeter. sweeter. Um, you can have lots of bubbles, you can have less yes, bubbles. bubbles, you can have larger bottles, you can have personal bottles, you can have the real high-end line, or you can go for a more affordable, affordable. option. Um, so there literally is something for everyone. Yes. Oh, I have a question. People put ice in their champagne. Ice. What is this? Oh, it's not recommended <laughs> because what it does, it kills the flavor of mm -hmm. the champagne. I could, yeah. And you don't really taste everything that you need to taste you don't really enjoy it. i mean why why do that yeah, why yeah. Do that, don't do it. it keep the bottle cold absolutely keep the bottle cold oh, in nice. the freezer you can have it in there for about 30 minutes 20 mm -hmm. to 30 minutes and then afterwards you can just keep it in the refrigerator um especially if you want that instant mm -hmm. that instant Chill. cold you know yeah um also ice destroys the bubbles mm -hmm. oh you know what you no, you want the bubbles. You, you need those bubbles in your mouth. <laughs> the bubbles is the fun part. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So just chill it in the refrigerator or over or some ice, ice in a bucket, in mm -hmm. an ice bucket. Um, and you're good to go. And finish it. Yeah. If you're going to open it, finish it. And don't use swords. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got some excellent tips. Today. Don't use swords. To open it. Even if you finish the first bottle of champagne, you know it, it, it may make you dance, yeah. but not necessarily very nimble with a sword. So please <laughs> try not to. We thank you so much for coming thank you. in. Thank you for having us. Uh, you know we appreciate the lesson. I think uh, we've demystified some mm -hmm. of the things about. Uh, uh, buying a bottle of champagne or sparkling wine now you know the difference too and uh where exactly you can get it so beverage division at carl h mendes on good. barrack road yes uh eight to five one hour closed for lunch and on saturday, saturday eight, eight to eight three, eight three. Yes. straight through thank you thank, thank you, you. we are gonna go ahead and take a break and when we come back we'll be cooking up some magic with leftovers so stay tuned <laughs>